Hurry, brother. We may get a piece of the chisel and be gone before they even notice. Uh oh. Yeah. Boy. Surrender. The old father demands it. No. Good. This fight is mine, boy. Go! And where do you think you're going? Oh no, brother! The little freak's got a bow! What are we gonna do? Kratos and Atreus' journey to the highest peak in all the realms is obviously the heart and soul of the story told in God of War 2018. But the game also serves up the almost equally important purpose of setting up the father and son pair's impending conflict with the powers of the Aesir in Asgard, and the events of Ragnarok. Given the 2018 title's much more focused and intimate story, our protagonists don't cross paths with too many of the Aesir, although there are still a few of them that play a crucial role in the story. One of them is Baldur, of course, who's the primary antagonist of the game, and accompanying them are his nephews, Magni and Modi, half-brothers of the Sons of Thor. All three of them are dead by the time God of War 2018 comes to a close, but their deaths are going to bring major repercussions for Kratos and Atreus, and really all the realms at large in God of War Ragnarok. So, as we approach the sequel's highly anticipated launch, here we're going to take a look back at Magni and Modi, and everything that we know about them and their story. Not much is said about the early lives of Magni and Modi in God of War 2018, but thanks to Mimir's stories, we do get a little bit of an insight into their past. When the half-brothers were very young, their father Thor got trapped underneath the corpse of stone giant Runyir, and though all the other Aesir failed to get him out, Magni and Modi proved to be the only ones powerful enough to lift the dead giant off of their father. Through a stroke of chance, the only one to witness this act was Mimir, but Magni, being the one who was spotted first in the situation, ended up getting all of the credit for saving Thor. Ignored and denied of admiration and recognition, the seeds of resentment grew within Modi. Starting in their early years, Magni was very much Thor's favorite and was viewed as his true heir. While everyone, Thor included, treated Modi as the lesser son, though of course he had ambitions to prove his worth, and eventually be deemed worthy to inherit his father's fabled hammer, Mjolnir. Later on, Magni and Modi would also go on to fight together against the Vanir in the aesir vanir War. That's about the extent of what we know of their lives before the events of God of War 2018. But now we come to the game itself, where there's plenty to talk about. Thanks to a case of mistaken identity, Boulder, and by extension the rest of the Aesir, believe that Kratos is the last guardian of the Jotnar, left in Midgard, which is something that puts him in Odin's crosshairs. On the Allfather's orders, Baldur tracks Kratos and Atreus down to their house. But in the ensuing fight, Kratos emerges victorious, which leads to Baldur having to call in some backup to help him on his mission to find Kratos and Atreus and bring them to Odin. Enter Magni and Modi. As the three of them resume their search for the father and son duo, they visit Mimir, who, at this point, is still imprisoned in a tree on top of the mountain. They try to get him to tell them where Kratos and Atreus are, while Baldur even tells him that if Mimir helps them, Baldur will talk to Odin about ending his imprisonment. But of course, there's no love lost between Mimir and the Aesir, while he is also well aware of the fact that there's absolutely no way Odin is going to let him go. He refuses to help Baldur, Magni, and Modi, and tells them to leave, and he isn't exactly polite about it. Magni and Modi split off from Baldur as they continue their search, and eventually they do find Kratos and Atreus. When the corpse of Thaumur drops its massive hammer and shatters the island of ice underneath, Thor's sons quickly chase their targets down and demand their surrender, hoping to bring them to Odin alive. Kratos isn't a man who surrenders, though, and predictably enough, a fight ensues. Throughout the fight, Modi constantly tries to rile Atreus up by hurling insults at him, and Atreus, being a kid, doesn't take too kindly to that, especially with some of Modi's insults being particularly vulgar in nature. Kratos is still Kratos at the end of the day, though, and the fight ends the only way it could have, poorly for his enemies. Magni and Modi might believe themselves to be infallible warriors, but the former dies when Kratos brutally slices his skull in half with his axe. Modi is distraught and completely in shock, but sensing that the tide of the battle has turned, he quickly flees, dodging arrows fired by an enraged Atreus. You have no idea. 
that he was Modi's half-brother isn't the only reason he hasn't reacted well to Magni's death. He also realizes that now, when he inherits Mjolnir as Thor's oldest living son, everyone will believe that that only happened by default, not because he deserved it, which means he will never be able to prove his worth. Unless, of course, he can avenge the death of Magni by killing Kratos and Atreus. To that end, he quickly tracks them down while they're trying to enter Tyr's vault. Taking them by surprise, he pins Kratos down with a constant stream of electricity summoned through his mace, and grabs Atreus by the throat, and once again begins taunting him. Atreus loses his cool yet again, but though he attempts to channel his inner rage, much as Kratos has been known to do, he fails and abruptly falls unconscious. This propels Kratos into action, who summons his strength to overpower Modi's electricity and disarm him, though once again Modi manages to flee. Afterward, he goes back to Asgard and returns to Thor, but that proves to be yet another poor decision. Thor is furious when he learns about his favorite son's death, and he takes that anger out on Modi, telling him that he left his brother to die, calling him a coward and beating him within an inch of his life. Disgraced and literally beaten and hoping to redeem himself in his father's eyes, Modi once again returns to Midgard and resumes his search for Kratos and Atreus. It doesn't take long for him to find them. He runs into them one final time in the innards of the mountain. By this point, Modi is broken and weakened. Modi doesn't lay off with his insults towards Atreus, even as Kratos, trying to set a better example for Atreus, decides that he's too weak and not worth killing. One of Modi's insults is directed at Faye, though, and angered by what he says about his mother, Atreus finally snaps, stabs Modi in the throat, and kicks him into the chasm, killing him. So there, Magni and Modi are both going to be dead when God of War Ragnarok kicks off. But we also know for a fact that their deaths and the death of Baldur haven't gone unnoticed. Thor is furious about members of his family being murdered by Kratos and Atreus, and all the Aesir have turned their attention to them as well, which, of course, is where we're going to pick up God of War Ragnarok, three years after the events of the 2018 title. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.